Everything you need to know to make your music interesting is right here in this sound. A rising tension leads to a discrete impact and then a big, bright, sustained sound slowly decrescendos. It changes textures, and then we return to silence. This is similar to the Big Bang. Opening a soda can offers a huge insight into what makes music good. You can use this form of fast rising tension, climactic impact, and chaos gradually receding in so many ways. How about we use a reverse cymbal leading into a snare and kick, followed by a moment of silence and then a dense groove that dissipates. Next, let's try it with a melody. For the rising tension, I'm gonna sing yeah, yeah. Then for the discrete impact, I'm gonna do a whoo sound very abruptly. Cool. Then we'll have just a moment of empty space and then a sustained note with vocal riffs will sort of fade out as I run out of breath. Now that I've structured this melody with the soda can technique, I'm going to apply the soda can technique to the whole arrangement to accompany that vocal part. From a sound design perspective, the soda can offers a way to think about creating satisfying sounds. It combines three important ingredients, cause and effect, movement in the high end, and punch in the low end. Cause and effect is when you make one sound lead into another, as if the first sound caused the second sound. This happens in video games a lot when you open a treasure chest. First, you'll hear the chest open, and then there's usually some kind of high sound that represents the treasure within. Movement in the high end is a good way to make a sound seem magical, like a dolphin swimming through water in turbo mode. Punch in the low end is a singular, discrete sound that punctuates the depth and body of a sound effect. Here is a sound effect with no punch in the low end. And now, here it is with a bass drop to give punch in the low end. When you combine cause and effect, movement in the high end and punch in the low end, you get some wonderful sounds. Here are some other common sound sensations you can use as a formula when you're writing music. A car passing by quickly. Flushing a toilet. Rain pouring on your car and then suddenly stopping as you drive under a bridge. When I was studying guitar at Berklee College of Music, my teacher David Tronzo was teaching me how to listen to music on a deeper level and he opened the window to the practice room. He told me to listen to the traffic and all of the sounds outside as if they were a musical composition that someone had actually planned in advance. And so I closed my eyes and I listened closely and I tried to hear how the sounds were leading into each other, how they were working against each other, rising and falling. And by listening that way, the whole world became music to me. It's this beautiful feeling when you're able to actually listen to the world that way, but it does take some practice to access this type of thought. So here are some things I like to think about when I listen to the world as music. What are the furthest and closest sounds I can hear? You can think about how the wind is sort of like reverb for the ground. Every pair of sounds forms a polyrhythm. You can ask, what tempo is my body in right now? If I muted, all the sounds that people made, what would be left? And if I muted nature, and all you could hear was humanity's thumbprint, what sounds would I be hearing? And if you're looking for more ways to approach and enjoy your music, you might like my course, Making Music for Yourself, which is 25% off right now for the spring. 